November 2 Tagung statt. Der nächste Punkt auf der Tagesordnung ist die Erklärung der Kommission betreffend die Stahlindustrie der EU, Möglichkeiten des Schutzes der europäischen Arbeitnehmer und Wirtschaftsbereiche. Bevor ich die Aussprache eröffne, möchte ich Sie darauf hinweisen, dass für die Beantragung des Catch-the-Eye-Verfahrens und für die blauen Karten sowohl die Standardregistrierung als auch das neue System, das eine elektronische Registrierung der Mitglieder erlaubt, möglich ist. Da bitte ich Sie immer, Ihre Abstimmungskarte mitzubringen. Sollten Sie sich für das Catch-the-Eye-Verfahren registrieren wollen, fordere ich Sie auf, damit jetzt zu beginnen, ohne auf das Ende der Aussprache zu warten. Die Aussprache beginnt im Namen der Kommission, Frau Kommissarin Bianchowska. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, dear members, uh, as requested, I, uh, let me make the statement on behalf of the Commission on the, on the subject of the EU steel sector. Uh, first, uh, uh, let me say a few words on the trade defense measures for steel. Over the three years period of 2013-16, the European steel industry severed, uh, suffered truly severe, severe losses. This was due to the trade spillovers from Chinese overcapacity. But our policy response was sweet and comprehensive. In March 2016, we issued a communication laying out a number of measures encompassing crucially trade policy. Over the years 2014-2018, the EU imposed a really unprecedented number, 25 new measures covering steel products. The aim was to remove the injurious effects of dumped and subsidized imports and restore fair trading conditions. These measures significantly reduced dumped and subsidized imports and protected 216,000 jobs. The EU took a number of steps to better protect the steel industry in the trade defense domain through import surveillance and accelerated investigations. The opening of the investigations was based on threat of injury where, where justified or the application of definite duties retroactively were warranted. These steps had a significant impact. Steel imports of products covered by measures adopted in the years 2014-2017 fell by more than 95% on average compared to the volume of imports before the measures were imposed. Despite signs of recovery for the steel sector, in part due to the imposition of trade defense measures, the EU steel industry continued to be vulnerable. And in 2018, the industry was confronted with yet another important challenge. It was the risk of injury stemming from the US Section 20, 232 measures on steel products and the risk of, steel, uh, of trade diversion. The Commission again reacted swiftly to this challenge by the opening of safeguards investigation. Early this year, the Commission and the EU member states agreed to put in place definitive safeguard measures considering the risk of redirection into the EU of substantial amounts of imports from another countries previously des destined to the U US market. When imposing def definite measures, uh, the Commission committed to re reassess the situation by July 2019. This was to ensure that their functioning remained adopted to steel market developments and to deal with unforeseen circumstances. The measures consist of a tariff rate quota, which de facto limits imports from all countries of origin to the average level of the years 2015-2017. A 25% duty is imposed beyond this, and this is a lower level than the high 2018. These measures, imposed until July 2021, allow for imports to continue at a non-injurious level. And all of those, they were largely supported by member states and industries. The Commission continues to monitor imports and will consider the need for another review in the future in a case of change uh, circumstances, for example, uh, Brexit. The Commission is also tackling the root cases of overcapacity by actively participate, participating in the G20 Global Forum on Steel Excess Capacity. In addition, the European Partnership on Clean Steel and Low Carbon Steel Making has been proposed under Horizon Europe. This will pull additional private and public research and innovation investment to support the development of breakthrough technologies for the production of clean steel. The EU is also supporting the development of clean steel technologies with the research fund for coal and steel. Let me also mention that under the, the, the next MFF, MFF will have Horizon Europe and InvestEU 
both new new sources for for investment and 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 research in the steel sector through the strategic forum of important on important projects for common european interest the commission is identifying business critical strategic value chains and define potential actions and investments from industry and public authorities this strategic forum has priority, priority, prioritized six key value, uh, strategic value chains, including the strategic value chain on low CO2 emission industry, and the final report has just been finalized last week on the 6th of November. Finally, the Innovation Fund under the ETS post-2020 will support, will support big demonstration projects employing uh, breakthrough low-carbon technologies, and it will cover up to 16 60% 6.0 of the relevant cost of the projects. The EU legal framework is, to, is there to protect also, let me now um, uh, move to the, to the labor market, to protect workers in case of industrial change and disruptions. Several EU directives set requirements for informing and consulting workers in case, cases of restructuring. It is the responsibility, of course, of the member states' authorities to ensure that the national legislation transposing EU directives is applied by the employees concerned. While the Commission has no power to interfere in specific company decisions regarding the restructuring plans, it urges companies to follow good practices on restructuring. EU funding is also available to support workers. Let me mention, of course, the EU Social Fund, fund which is used to improve employment opportunities, promote education and long, lifelong learning, and develop active inclusion pro, uh, policies. Uh, and the very important tool that we have is European Globalization Adjustment Fund, key instrument providing support to wor workers made redundant as a result of major structural changes uh, the first step, step to mobilize the EGF um, is for the member states concerned to submit an application and the EGF regulation provides for a minimum of 500 redundancies in an enterprise as a one of eligibility criteria to trigger the intervention. In the case, of course, of the small labour market or, a, or in a, uh, some exceptional circumstances, derogation from the, this criterion is always possible. Um, so, as you can see, the European Commission has taken for a long time a very clear stance to support the competitiveness of the EU steel sector. We issued a communication dedicated to the EU steel sector, uh, the so-called Steel Action Plan. Uh, we took steps to strengthen EU defence against unfair trading practices. And let me um, concluding underline that in our, in our renewed industrial policy strategy, uh, we stress that a uh, robust industrial base in essential for, is essential for Europe's economic growth, preservation of sustainable jobs and EU competitiveness of the global market. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to your remarks. Vielen Dank, Frau Kommissarin Bienkowska. Wir kommen nun zur Aussprache. Es spricht für eine Minute Herr Kollege Salini. Grazie Presidente, buonasera Commissaria, mi permetta di ringraziarla per il lavoro di questi anni, per il meraviglioso lavoro di questi cinque anni. La questione dell'acciaio nell'industria siderurgica europea è una questione enorme. Il pilastro costituito dall'acciaio è stato tradito da molti eh, fattori che caratterizzano l'approccio un po' come dire disinvolto rispetto alle politiche industriali che spesso anche l'Europa ha avuto. A questo si è aggiunto il dramma dei dazi americani all'acciaio eh, all in generale, che ha determinato il riversarsi sull'Europa di un'enorme quantità di acciaio a bassissimo prezzo, in particolare dalla Turchia. Le misure di salvaguardia individuate non sono sufficienti. Non sono sufficienti, i risultati lo dimostrano. L'acciaio turco nel 2017 era al 16% del nostro mercato, oggi è al 33%. Dobbiamo intervenire in, eh, impedendo queste, queste derive e dall'altro lato monitorando paesi che non sempre dimostrano attenzione alla tradizione manifatturiera. Il caso dell'Italia su Taranto ne è una dimostrazione. L'Europa reinsegna all'Italia a trattare bene la propria industria. Vielen Dank, Herr Kollege Salini. Es folgt für eine Minute Frau, Herr Kollege Kalenda. Grazie, Presidente. Grazie, Commissaria. Eh, io sono stato nel, nel Consiglio Commercio in questi anni e il lavoro che si è fatto eh, in particolare per quanto riguarda l'acciaio è senz'altro stato un lavoro importante. È arrivato troppo tardi, tuttavia, 
ed è ancora troppo debole. Sono molto convinto che la revisione delle misure di salvaguardia vada fatta immediatamente, subito. Abbiamo già menzionato, è stato già menzionato il caso turco e anche per quanto riguarda la Cina c'è ancora moltissimo da fare. Molti prodotti entrano con triangolazioni che vanno controllate. Ma c'è un tema che ha a che fare con il processo di cambiamento dell'industria dell'acciaio all'interno. Noi sappiamo che la normativa sugli aiuti di Stato è particolarmente stringente sull'acciaio. Io credo che valga la pena ragionare non solo su fondi europei per la ricerca, ma fondi per la transizione industriale per consentire alle aziende di fare i loro investimenti ambientali pur in un momento di grande difficoltà del settore dell'acciaio e a questo scopo rivedere la normativa sugli aiuti di Stato. Grazie. Vielen Dank, Herr Kollege Kalenda. Herr Kollege Kalenda, gestatten Sie eine Frage von Frau Kollegin Wisniewska? Do you allow a question of Kollege Wisniewska? Uh, 